How's that, Claire? Is that good? Check one. Hot, hot Monty. Hot. Check, check. Chinese chicken chumbo bumba. So here we are again. We're doing another fantastic LA show. Lots of great comedians, hot comedians. You've seen them on uh, Premium Blend, 1999. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Solomon Giorgio. This is, of course, the beautiful Eric Dorian. This is our home. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to our home. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Keith, sir. She will be performing tonight on the show. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Allison Stevenson hanging out in the corner here. She's going to be telling Joe. All right. There are some more comedians in here. Esther. She's going to be on the show tonight. Sean O'Connor. <laughs> Jack Knight. He's going to be up there yeah. telling his jokes. Ahmed Barucha will be on the show. Yeah. Ben, also on the show tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. Chris break right there. This is two Ethiopians on one TV show. That's never happened in the history of television, by the way. Yeah, you guys never happened. So are you gonna do your accent or am I gonna do my accent? Because one of us has to do the accent. What would it sound like if your dads talk to one another? How gay is your son? <laughs> Before I start, did anybody else go to Juilliard here? <laughs> just me, just me, thought so. My life is crazy, my life is weird. It's funny, it's weird. I wanna change my entire body. <laughs> I hate it. I wanna get, okay. Okay, don't judge, just be open. Just be my sounding board. Like a little blonde toupee. <laughs> just like, just like a little, like blonde, just like, Right? 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 Can I? What else? I don't have anything else. I just have, right now I'm like balls deep in writing my memoirs. So I was just like. No, I am. I am. And when you're ageless and timeless, how do you start? Where do you start? <laughs> That's why it drives me crazy. I see on Twitter all the time people tweeting, oh, if I had a time machine, I'd do this, I'd do that. Honey, if I had a time machine, I'd put it on the corner, put it on Craigslist. What do I need a time machine for? My life is a time machine. Do you know what I mean? You know, I was really afraid that we were going to have to perform somewhere tonight where there weren't any rats, but we're good. I recently tricked a guy into having sex with me. Um, he was gay, and I told him I was Dave Grohl. <laughs> We had fun. <laughs> I'm really lonely. I just started to do this thing where I'll reset a password just to receive an email. <laughs> my phone buzzes. I'm like, oh my god, who needs me? <laughs> and then uh, now I go the next step and I make the security question, how are you? <laughs> and the answer is just funny, you should ask. <laughs> Is good banter? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Get that out of my face. But I always wanted to say that. Um, Please give it up for Bobcat. A lot of you are really young. A lot of you weren't even born when I was relevant. And um, I was really big in the 80s. And um, uh, your parents may have to my movies to make you. Um, so, uh, comedians, we are on planes all the time, and I was on a flight, and the engine blew up. Um, it's going from L.A. to New York, and midway through, it was like, Poof, and the whole plane just started. That's not the noise it made. Clearly, I'm not the black guy from Police Academy. It makes funny noises. It was like, Poof.
And, uh, and then there was a rooster on the wing. Uh, the engine blew up, and the plane just started careening straight towards the earth, and it was terrifying. I found out later that the pilot was just trying to land the plane as quick as possible, but it was going so fast that it was like G-force tests, like people's beverages were floating in the air, and people were <laughs> screaming. It was horrific. And I said, stay calm. See what the flight attendants are doing. That's how you survive something like this. And I look, and two flight attendants are looking out the window, and then they turn back, and they were, they were sobbing. <laughs> crying flight attendants. Put that in your mind. That's truly the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. We're here for your safety first. F*** that. They had checked out. They were, like, holding each other's hands. I always thought you were professional, Karen. And a good portion of the other people on this flight was the United States Special Olympics team. That's who was on the flight. And uh, I, I know, I can't, I, I can't change it so you're more comfortable. It was, <laughs> it was 45 men and women in red, white, and blue running suits with medals. So if it wasn't the Special Olympics team, it was a really big hip-hop group with Down syndrome. <laughs> As the plane was careening towards the earth, the pilot got out. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your pilot. There's no reason to be alarmed. When we land in Cleveland, the runway will be covered entirely in foam. At the very end of the runway, it will be a fire truck. And I thought, oh, this is the end of my life, you know? And I, I thought about my daughter, and I thought about my friends. And then, clear as a bell, a, a voice in the back of the plane went, fire truck! <laughs> <laughs> he was excited. He was going to see a fire truck. And I laughed. And no one else did. I looked around. I go, you didn't hear fire truck? I went from atheist to agnostic at that moment. I was like, maybe there is some sort of higher deity in the universe. And I know, I know some of you may work with mentally challenged people, or you may have them in your family, but if you don't think they say or do anything funny, you're denying that they're human beings, because that's the funniest thing I've ever heard another human being say. Bye, <laughs> As soon as I blew my first cloud, I knew that that was my one true love. Straight up vape it, for sure. I lived that vapor life, dude. Straight up, like, vapes. Oh, yeah, dude. 70 plus thousand on Instagram. 70 plus thousand on Facebook. He's killing the game. Top of the vape game, top of the real life game. Top of the comedy game right here, dude. Strap Venda Zuna, dude. Strap coming out here from Ethiopia. Yeah, that's what's up, dude. <laughs> you just got vape. <laughs> that shit, dude. I'm not that good at reading signals and nonverbal cues. That's why I don't like courtship. Like, I can't tell if a girl likes me unless she's currently touching my penis. <laughs> and even then, I'm like, this could go either way. <laughs> I don't like texting either. Like, I never know how long I'm supposed to wait before I text the girl back. Like, this girl texted me, nothing much, you, an entire day after I texted her, what's up? <laughs> so I'm gonna reply, just chilling exactly one year from now. <laughs> <laughs> My goal is to make her feel 365 times as insecure as I did. <laughs> uh, a lot of people blaming ADD for kids not paying attention in school, right? But I feel like people forget that school sucks. <laughs> That's part of the problem. Like, I used to think history was boring, but history is filled with murder and deception. It's better than Shakespeare. All I can remember in school, they just shoved the date down here. Like, just the date, the date, the date, the date. The date is the least interesting part of the story. I've never been telling someone a story, but I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> Got these two Italian supermodels back to my apartment. One thing led to another. What day was it, man? What day was it? What was the date? Who was president? What was the climate? When did this happen? Get to the details. Like, I used to think George Washington was boring, but he's murdered people. He went to war. He turned down being king of America. He's probably stabbed someone in the face with a knife at the end of a gun. Like, he killed people back in the day. I'd be like, I'm sorry, I'll remember this forever. <laughs> All I remember in school is a cherry tree story, which is not even real. They made it up. They made up a less interesting story about him and told that to everybody. <laughs> hey, you know George Washington? Oh, that's the cherry tree guy, right? No, that's fake. He murdered people <laughs> on Christmas. <laughs> that's like in a thousand years from now. I'm like, you know George W. Bush led this country to a war all based on a lie? What? I thought he just trampled his father's azalea patch. <laughs> I'm like scared to smoke it from the night. No, don't get me smoking. <laughs> I want to be on the Disney Channel. Don't get this. I'm like alcoholic. <laughs> I know. I want to be on the Disney Channel. Don't film yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, I don't want to be like a cool late night set with a suit and I'm like. <laughs> Bitches, get homes and drink liquor. Yeah, right. Has anyone here heard of that new Megan Trainer song? It's called Dear Future Husband. 
Um, I have a, have a problem with that song. At one point, she's like, I'll be sleeping on the left side of the bed. Open doors for me, and you might get some... <laughs> head. But what she says is kisses. She goes, I'll be sleeping on the left side of the bed. Open doors for me and you might get some kisses. <laughs> Not like the type of comic who wants to talk about head on the stage. But if you mean something, you point of all this is to say that one of my favorite songs of all time is uh, Magic Stick. It's by Little Kim featuring 50 Cent. And why I like this song is, is because 50 Cent comes in and he's like, I have the magic stick. And then Little Kim comes in and she's like, you know what? I have the magic clit. She just avoid the goddamn cameras while smoking a cigarette because one day I'm going to be on a Disney channel. different type of grind, man. I'm in New York, so we do like three or four spots a night, and bringing that type of grind here is literally Grand Theft Auto 5, where every show, they're like, yo, come on my show, and come on my show. So that's two spots, but one's in East L.A., and the other one's in Santa Monica. Nigga, that's like a mission. That's a mission. It just pops up. Bing! By the time you drive there, you're like, what's funny? What's comedy? I uh, graduated college, and uh, college is the worst scam. <laughs> I would feel for my life. College is all about capitalism. They don't care about your education. Every professor trying to make profit off of you. Every professor like, all right, you got to get this book. It's $500. And we're only concentrating on chapters two, four, and six. <laughs> and I'm the author. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm a student, not your biggest fan. <laughs> Did I register for this class on Ticketmaster? <laughs> from New York, went to school in Brooklyn. I was scared to go at first, but Brooklyn's nice now, man. They got a lot of hipsters. I like hipsters, man. I really like hipsters in the hood because they keep the crime down. <laughs> so I seriously think criminals can't rob white people dressed like that. It puts them in a good mood. It shifts the whole momentum of the robbery. It's like, give me your money! <laughs> Yo, dog, she got a top hat on. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't rob Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> go ahead, girl, go ahead. <laughs> Yo, you think she had the rabbit in that hat? <laughs> I could have got that rabbit and gave it to my daughter. Like, ta-da! <laughs> you like bunnies, baby? <sighs> it's ridiculous, Travis. This is what I'm doing my life. I'm robbing magicians on the block. That's what I'm doing. I'm done with this, nigga. No more. Look at this, man. Brooklyn's new. It's innovative. They got the Barclays Center in the hood. You know why I did Ride Crossy from my hood? You know I did Ride Crossy from my hood? I bought a cupcake, nigga. A cupcake. It was $8. It was good. It was good. I'm not gonna lie. Recently, I turned 30 years fun, <clears throat> and my grandmother asked me how I felt about it. Naturally, my answer to that question was that I felt nothing, because that's how she raised me to feel nothing. <laughs> uh, but I was thinking about, you know, all the achievements in her life when she was my age. Um, primarily that she had found a man who said that he would pay her bills <laughs> like he's Ryan Seacrest or some shit. That's going to work really great on the coast. That's actually a reference to a Los Angeles billboard. Um, he found a... 
she found a man uh, who would pay her bills for the rest of her life, support her children, etc., etc. And I know at this point in the game, if I were to meet a man who would pledge to pay for my existence until I died, uh, the first thing I would do with all that sweet scratch is go down to one of those kiosks in the mall and get a shirt custom printed up that says, this is what a feminist looked like. You know what I'm saying? I can't afford morals. I can't even afford to eat our food. So, gents, you get a lot of bitches coming up in your face, right? Talking about how they hate being catcalled. To which I say, if those bitches didn't want it, they should have been born with two X chromosomes. Am I right, dogs? <laughs> but personally, I really love it when a guy catcalls me. I love it the most when it's a little fella. You get a little fella coming up to you, just little fella coming up to you and he says, Hey, mommy, hey, baby, hey, baby, hey, mommy, hey, mommy, baby, hey, baby, hey, mommy, hey, baby. He's so cute, you know, I just want to pick him up and I want to put him in my pocket, you know? I want to pick him up and I want to put him in my pocket and then I want to take my hand and just start applying more and more pressure to my body, you know? So I can feel his tiny little bones break under the weight of my claw. And I can feel his blood rush down my leg and I can just absorb his spirit goddamn essence with his last breath, you know? Because I'm not his mommy, I'm infertile. Bye. Like, in person. Awful. Like, this guy, I guess he was trying to be nice or some shit. But he, uh, he was just like, this is all he said. He said that I was too much woman. <laughs> That's all he, too much woman. <laughs> and then he just left. Like, has anyone heard that? Have you been given that phrase ever? Too much woman? At first I was like, oh, okay, this guy thinks I have, like, four vaginas. <laughs> Like 30 fallopian tubes, estrogen seeping out of my pores 24 7. Which, uh, that might be true, actually. I don't know. I don't know how the female body works. No. <laughs> I just live here, you know? <laughs> yeah. But then I went to, I went to Urban Dictionary. Dot com and uh, <laughs> I typed in the phrase too much woman they were straight up they were real as f <laughs> Urban Dictionary was like you're fat you have big thighs no one's ever gonna love you <laughs> and uh, you know what hey guess what they're not wrong I have big thighs <laughs> secrets out <laughs> I'm not a thin woman and I have big thighs Uh, hey, uh, here's the thing, though. Real talk. Getting real with you. Uh, my thighs? Favorite part of my body. Oh, oh, did you just say that? Yeah, that's right. I love my thighs. I love my big-ass thighs. My thighs almost killed a man. How many of you can say that shit about your thighs, huh? My thighs literally almost killed a man. I was, uh, I was sitting on his face, <laughs> you know, I'm a grown-ass woman, I don't want to come, <laughs> and I was sitting on his face, <laughs> and uh, about like a minute in, <laughs> he gets a full-on panic attack, <laughs> legit, a real-ass panic attack, like in the movies. No. Yes. years. We were discovered at Six Flags. Six Flags, Germany. We love you, Six Flags. <laughs> Girl, I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy you came to the show. I'm so happy you're in my house. Love you, baby. I love you, too. 
This is a song for you. It's called Get Out of My House. We love you. Good night. <laughs>